if you hit that subscribe button, that notification bell, you're going to be missing out on videos and free prizes and raffles we have coming up. This video includes timestamps, so check out the description below if you want to bounce ahead and just grab the info that you want. Hey, I made a little video about my testing. I was going to just go through the process of testing these carburetors with you and so you could kind of see what that looks like. So we filled our tank. We're going to supply fuel to these carburetors. And one of the first things I learned over the years is that simply uh, supplying fuel with the, the drain screws closed I've, I've literally seen like air pockets in here to where it, it doesn't allow the fuel to flow from a higher spot above the carburetor and to go out. So just to, to make for dang sure that I have fuel in here, because you know, we're looking for leaks, like a float not shutting off, it's gonna come out the emulsion tube. We're looking for leaks around a bowl gasket. We're looking for leaks around O-rings on the fittings. We're looking for leaks around the accelerator pump body. We're looking for any kind of external leak and that's the complaint from the customer is that you believe that the seats weren't shutting off and that they were dripping okay so i'm going to go through here and you could see here as the fuel goes in goes here it uh goes to this 90 so while it's feeding this carburetor it's also feeding this one simultaneously the float should come up and shut off but we should have have this work why i made this video is i want to show you something there is something goofy here you could see that one. I'm just getting a little drip. When I go to the other one here, okay, I get what I expect. I get a full draining system. So it's, I got one or two things going on. Okay, let me close these back up instead of wasting a bunch of fuel here. Is I have, and watch this actually, just to, to make sure I'm not doing anything goofy. Look at this, watch. Okay. I mean, I got that thing damn near all the way out. So what I have is I have something clogged or whatnot with that actual drain. I wouldn't want that because this tells me a lot. If I pull up to a gas station or my home or whatnot, and I had a little drip versus full fuel pouring out, I'd want to know that because if it doesn't leak out, then it leaks down into the engine. And then we got big problems. We could hydrolock a motor. So I need this overflow tube to work. Okay. All right. Quiz time. Hit pause. Tell me what that tube's function is. But there should be a standoff tube in there that's also attached to the same hole that if the carburetor overfills, it will uh, it will run out down this tube. I have a really cool video on how to fix those if you hadn't seen them. Well, first thing we're going to notice inside these bowls is they don't have that brass standoff tube. So let's think about what would happen if this doesn't have an overflow, like if the float sticks or fuel doesn't shut off to allow that fuel to drain out into the ground. This makes sense for probably that's a newer vehicle where they're really more concerned about emissions uh, in, in external fire hazards, always, always a bad deal. But what would happen in this case is that when the fuel has nowhere to go, it's for surely going to end up going, I got the carbs upside down right now, it's going to end up going out that emulsion tube and then down into the carburetor or it may fill up uh, the air box. Uh, either of those are going to be a bad day, but one significantly worse than the other, right? draining when when we choose to when we open this hole in this cutaway right here it's gonna drain it let's find out right now if we have a fuel delivery meaning somewhere in here somewhere some junk in here the needle and seat being an issue or whether it's just the overflow tube i can do that pretty quick by go ahead and just take this screw all the way out and see what happens here whoa wow now, I could still be plugged up in here. I find that hard to believe, but I still could be. Something is definitely not right. I bet you'd like to see what happens if I do the other side. You kind of, you know, ask yourself, like, how do you learn about these things? Well, when you got two of anything, the chances of the same problem being at both aren't always that likely. So what I'll do here can see it's just pouring out of there. If I take that screw all the way out, what do you think is going to happen? Okay. If I take that all the way out, I don't want to make too much of a mess here. Yeah, I'm just going to make a big old mess if I take it all the way out. I guess you YouTubers better be happy about this, okay? All right, I'm almost there you can actually see it's just pouring out of there right that's that's what should happen I'm gonna make 
enormous fuel leak. I already got enough of a leak going on here. Okay, so I'm not seeing, I got these tightened back up. I'm not seeing the complaint from the customer. Okay, but what I am seeing is a problem. So I need to get a hold of him and find out what he'd like me to do to move forward. There's definitely something goofy going on. And, and here's the, the bigger reason for really good communication to your customers, or even as the questions you ask yourself, is why were these carburetors off to begin with anyway, right? So maybe he pulled the carbs because of some delivery, fuel delivery issue to a cylinder. And then ultimately what we have is that uh, during that repair or whatnot, this other problem was, was discovered. What I should have said there was created. Uh, one thing we got to be really mindful of is when we open up uh, these carburetors, we can really, uh, you know, in induce problems. Just think of it like open heart surgery where you're going to keep the area as clean and prepped as possible to not uh, create a secondary issue. We could have, you know, two separate issues. But the fact that we see right now is we do not have this carburetor bowl filling up. If that carburetor bowl didn't fill up, ask yourself what would happen to that cylinder? It'd run lean, right? It'd hesitate, cough, puke, spit, whatnot. And these are the questions asked my customer. Why'd you take the carbs off to begin with? And we may find out to us, you know, the bigger issue has to deal with that one, so. Customer uh, in this case just asked us to do some seat repair, but I always like to verify the slides are working even when they don't ask us to uh, do any work in there. It's just such a fast and easy test you could do yourself. Got full uh, deep dive videos on this over in the fuel systems playlist on our channel. So I want to show you why collecting the evidence is so nice here. Uh, what I can do is I could fill, you know, the good working carburetor and this one now and i was able to get this amount of fuel out of there which then i could you know put in a cup and measure it and, and find out whether i'm even getting capacity over time but i'm not going to go to that extent to to measure it because i know that i have to take it apart to fix it and i'm going to find out why i don't have instant fuel in there anyway so uh but like if i if i couldn't fill it back up fast enough even though i have this ability to get this you know, over time, when the engine's running and you're honking down the road, it doesn't care about the fact that, you know, eventually it could fill up. It needs to fill up right when it needs it, okay? So we don't have time to think about like a toilet when you flush it and you got to wait for it to fill back up. We're not going to be able to pull over on the side of the road and go, okay, you know, little fella, fill back up. I mean, we need it to be instantaneous. So have a problem anyway, and that's why I'm not going to go ahead and measure it. So let's get apart and see what's going on inside here. So this is interesting, I just kind of wiped my hand along the inside of the float needle and I got this just from wiping around here. So we definitely have some debris or exterior evidence of something that we don't want to see in there. Not our problem, but not what we want. Let's keep going. All right, so here's a good sign. I took the uh, cap off for the accelerator pump. And as you can see, another good reason to wet testing, you can see it's wet. <laughs> so that means fuel was getting in there. Because one thing this test wasn't doing was actually operating the, the throttle body to see if the, um, the uh, accelerator pump and circuits were working. This crossover tube is what's supplying fuel to this carb from this circuit show you real quick to go out this nozzle here which then goes through this nozzle which then flip this around here comes out that nozzle right there to inject into the carburetor so i don't really worry about that too much until i'm on assembly proving that it works because if i have to take some apart i know i'm going to clear all those passageways i'm going to prove there's no tears in the diaphragm i'm going to do you know make sure the o-rings in place i'm going to do all of that when i'm in there and i got full videos of this in the cv playlist if uh, if you're not a member you might want to join that so you have access to all the the over 100 videos there in that playlist but for purposes here just talking about this this uh, carb body, we knew that this carb bank uh, was getting fuel. Now, one thing I want you to see that I did, I'm gonna have to drop this little clip in the other video, was that I actually rotated this stand around. Let me, let me move this stuff back here. Let me kind of zoom back and figure out what I got going on here. So this, if you remember, when I first did all my stuff, we were coming from the front side of this, right? 
Well, when you flip it, now that makes the left, the right, the right, the left, right? And I don't want to do that. I'm already setting parts out for the right carb or the left carb. I'm not worried about cylinder order. I'm just worried about orientation right now for me so that the parts that came out of that go in that tray. When I go to figure out a cylinder number so I can maybe match a service menu where they may differ, then I'll worry about number one or two or so on. So what I do is I just simply flip this around, okay? So that now that I, when I, when I flip those carbs, now we're back to this carb is for these parts and so on. So really requires some attention to detail on the organization that you're going to do when you work with these to make sure you're getting the, the, the right parts in the right places. If you're kind of new to carburetors too, like I said, there's a playlist with hundreds, you know, hundred over hundred videos in that. If you didn't know, sometimes carburetors, especially in an inline four cylinder, will have different uh, jets and springs and whatnot on the outside too and the inside too. And then on V setups, you can have different front to rear, even if it's just a twin. And if it's a four cylinder, you significantly have uh, different jetting and springs and whatnot front to rear, even different internal parts in the carburetor like the emulsion tube. So Go check out all those playlists if you want to learn all things fuel or reach out to me directly for some one-on-one -on -one service. Let's keep going. All right, I'm going to make a little bit of a mess here. What I'm going to do is go ahead and just uh, turn the fuel on. And I, I just want to see if any junk or see how this carburetor seems to respond for fuel getting out into it before I worry about even cleaning or anything else. So I'll just uh, turn the fuel on and off. Actually, let me zoom in to... I'm going to hold this one down because I really want it all to focus right there. I just want to see if anything, like I said, just shoots out of it. Okay. Seems to have fuel flow there pretty, pretty easy. Let's do this one. Let's do this one doing that same test. Just flip it around, see how it responds. And there was just an air pocket from before, but looks to be exactly the same consistency. So I think that carb bowl gave us a false illusion like there was something going on just because it wouldn't drain. It seems like it's getting a good equal fuel supply to both of them. Let's think about this again then. So when we pulled that screw, uh, it was just a, a little drip, 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 and we were not getting hardly anything out of there. So it leads me to believe that, it, it, my best guess right now is that this is probably gonna be uh, getting fuel there. So I'm gonna test it next. But if that's getting fuel there, then that means that this is just blocked or whatnot. And if you look down in here, let's try and get some light on here. This, this doesn't have the standoff tube, so it's not drilled. There's a hole down there in the bottom. And when you pull that screw, okay, it's going to let it start to leak out here to drain instead of pulling it all the way out, right? So when I, when I look at this, it didn't seem, see if I can go through the light here. Okay, so I could see good light in there. So that's from top side to bottom side and I see good light right there so I think I got like you know maybe the junk came out but if you look inside there there's actually let's see if we can get it here I thought it was worth mentioning here this is why sometimes when you're taking something apart it's very hard to to not quote-unquote ruin the evidence and you can see here that we just uh it, it almost looked like it's completely through and that should have flowed fuel fine but Ultimately, there's there's probably some of this junk just sitting on the bench from uh, flipping the you know car back and forth upside down here and there, and it's sitting on the bench somewhere. So no matter how careful you are, you can kind of ruin the evidence sometimes. All right, hopefully you could see there, you know, probably from banging around on the bench or whatnot. There's some junk that's in there, and it's it's you know made itself free that it just had nowhere to go as too big a chunk of something that was probably restricting that from draining out. So I'm gonna guess from the amount that we had in that tote that it was getting fuel and we just got this, you know, fault scare or whatnot that it wouldn't drain out equally or whatnot. So we've, we can definitely fix that. I can just clean that out really good and then test it to make sure it drains free and clear. But now we gotta go back to, to really talking to the customer and find out, you know, what the, the real complaint was because that would, um, that little debris in there at this point 
would only affect draining the carb, not filling the carburetor and not affect any runnability. But let's just say that for the customer that was sitting in there and floating in there and, and blocking a jet or sticking into the float needle area and causing it uh, to not shut off, then he would have seen those problems. And maybe now the whole problem has made its way you know, to the exit finally, just from shipping. This got shipped by FedEx, traveled across the country, bounced along down the road, and maybe it's just worked its way there now. All we can do is clean it out, retest, and make sure there's no leaks and that it, it drains the way it's supposed to. All right, let's, let's keep going. So what I'm doing now is really comparing the seats. It looks like somebody has maybe gone in and like honed or, or reamed the bottom of that seat. Let's see if I can get a, a better shot here. So you can see how it looks like it's fresh. It's fresh in there. You look at how there's the dirt around the brass on the top, around the seat area, it almost. And if I look at here, it just doesn't seem as big a diameter. So what I'm gonna do next is throw a couple needles in there. All right, so I've got a, a couple of needles sitting in there and I want you to see where, you know, one of the cautions you gotta have, cautions you gotta have is using, you know, the right needle, number one. And just because the needle looks like it'll work doesn't always necessarily mean that it will. But what what we need is we need the ability of that rubber tip to go into that seat and, and shut it off, right? So if we look here at this one, let me get focused here. And you can see that clip is not touching the seat, okay? There's a gap up above it, so that's good. So that means it should have the ability to close, right? Sorry about the shakiness. Let's look at this other one here. Ironically, this is not the one I'm worried about. But at first sight, oh good, 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 good. He, without this being magnifying, it looked like the clip was hitting the seat. And I'm like, uh oh, that's gonna be a problem. If you ream that out too much on the bottom end of that, you can imagine that when you ream it, it means the, the needle will go down further. And then eventually there's a point where you have physical contact and it can't do what it's supposed to do. So extremely cautious in doing this job. But let's, uh, let's go ahead and test these now. We'll put a, a tester on there and see what PSI they hold at, if they hold. All right, if you haven't seen it before, when I do this, always make sure and test your tool. Last thing we want is a leak like out of fitting or something and uh, giving us false data. So feeling pretty good. Let's hook her up. Okay, so I'm gonna just physically hold them down to start off with just to see what happens here. Okay, I got, that tells me my tool's good. It tells me my fuel line's good. And it also tells me that the fuel inlets are good. Because this is plastic here, but it's brass underneath. That's just covering a, a, a brass nipple. And so you can have it where this is cracked being a problem, or you can have it where the fitment of that brass nipple going in is a problem. You never know who's worked on it or how old it is or if there's a problem. So, so even though I've taken my finger off those floats, you can see here, they're still holding, what, five PSI? They're just slowly draining. So let's see what we can get. Okay, without any fuel to hold them down. Remember, it's only gravity holding them right now. Go ahead and see here. I like to do this kind of like pop test. You could see. Let me let me hold these on here. Okay, I'm gonna physically hold those. This I could crank as much as I want because I'm I'm actually holding it down. But I'm just gonna pop it like that, and I want to hear that really fast swoosh. Right? If it was just slowly coming out of there, there could be a problem or a restriction or something. So let's let's try it again on the other one here. Go ahead and crank it up. And you hear that so it's definitely holding pressure to where when i intentionally release it it's taking all of it and dumping it immediately and and that's what we want to see so as far as the fittings to the floats we're looking pretty good if i could not get this to hold here what i do then is i would really try to focus some attention on the on the seat that's pressed into the body and then i'd get out like soapy water and I'd try and do a, a leak test around that if it didn't hold. Since it holds, I don't need to do that. If you haven't seen that, you can watch my other videos. I'll show you where factory pressed in seats 
um, have leaked or you know leaked over the years or whatnot and then there's there's no repair on that you're getting a different carburetor for that when they're when they're pressed in uh, if they are serviceable still a super valuable test to make sure that your leak isn't being completely bypassed uh, because of the leak and not letting the needle and seat do what it's supposed to do anyway okay so with that being said we're looking pretty good here we can get um, a really good solid test now I don't need the floats in to do this I could go ahead and uh, just use my thumb I could use a, a plug or whatnot to determine you know what I have going on now I also just did both of them at the same time from the single fuel source if I was really concerned like there was a problem with just one, then I'd start taking these hoses off and then pinpointing one carburetor and just focusing on that. So, so what I'm gonna do next, I'm gonna do a performance test to see what kind of PSI each one can hold on its own. So I'm gonna go ahead and like I said, pull one uh, float out. I'm hooked up with the gauge. I'll go here, just get my thumb across here. And you can actually hear it pop in there. You can see it actually shot some fuel out. Okay, and it's it's going to fall back down to where it can hold. And I'm seeing around 6 or 7 PSI. Something like that. And it's just sitting there holding pretty good. You know, a leaky one will sit there and oh, it's dropped down to 6. And when you aren't like controlling it if you will because you don't have fuel that's holding it on it's not uncommon to see this leak some okay if i go under that threshold point you'll see it's gonna sit there for you know quite a long time if i were to come back here in 10 minutes i could check it or whatnot but without you know the fuel holding it to that position it's not uncommon like to see the tiniest little little dribble when you have a leak or you have a nick in the seat or a nick in the uh the float needle or, or just something doesn't have the ability to seal what you'll see is more like this where it just drains right on down uh really con consistent because it's just leaking right out so i'll go ahead and flip those i'm gonna do the same thing obviously so this one's not doing what it's supposed to do you can see here is it just it just keeps on leaking unless i really put some pressure on there physically hold it it will go which is is hard to know when where's the line of of the fuel doing the job the weight of the fuel but i think we could clean that one up and get it to seal up better that's what we're going to try and do we're going to try and polish that seat i've got a full video on that if you haven't seen it before in the playlist and then here's something fun I like to do as well so just out of pure curiosity what happens if I use the one, the known good one from the other side? Do we have any any shift or any any change? And we're getting really the same result. So that's definitely the seat a seat issue versus this one. Funny, that's why you got to check everything. You know our problems uh, now switching back to the other side of the carb body here. So here's a close-up of the left and right uh, seats as I've been working on it throughout this video. And if we will look really closely at the left one, what we're going to see in the about the 2 o'clock position is a little nick in the seat. And I believe that's where the leak is coming from. The, the right one's as is. That's how I received it. it it's a little dirty in there, but it wasn't... Uh, it was sealing. It was doing its job. So what we're going to do is we're going to do our polishing method that we use here at How to Wrench. That's why they were sent here. Uh, we've got a jig we made up and, and how we ream that as uh, um, straight as we can, if, if not even uh, as good as factory. So let's go ahead and do that and then see the outcome. So after reaming and polishing, uh, this is the, the best effect we could get. Um, I, I would have liked to have gone even a little more, but the, the challenge we had was you'll, you'll sink that needle too much and then the clip won't have the clearance it needs to do its job and so between the the float uh, height range and, and this polish this is a, a super satisfactory result as you'll see from the uh, the pressure test here but you're within the limitations of what you got and that's what we had all right so here's a pressure test on this and you can see that we're getting it to hold around uh, four and a half five psi but to do so i had to go back and actually set the floats about 18 millimeter at 17 it was still just dripping 
All right, I'm loving this. Kept working on this a bit, and it looks like I'm really getting it to hold real close to five PSI. All right, we are going back together, and we uh, set the float height. If you haven't seen my video on this, we got really detailed videos on that. You want just the weight of the float, just touching the needle. Set your spec, you can go from that surface to the top, and then uh, dial yourself in. What you really want to do is make sure that you have that spring movement like that. What that is is like a little shock absorber. So uh, per what the customer asked to do, they wanted the, uh, uh, the this seat fixed. We did that. I mentioned earlier I had a little benefit by bumping that up to 18 millimeter, and this was the uh, final results from that. That's uh, quite an improvement over uh, that, that Nick being in the seat there. And this one will fall right about there. And then, and then before we go back together and start to cover things up, there's a few tests that we can do to verify whether the accelerator pump circuit is working. So I want you to be able to just take a look at this with me real quick. When we fill the float bowl, the float bowl is going to fill up, fill these chambers. We got to get that fuel from here out the accelerator nozzles right there. Okay. So we want to get out that nozzle right there. And before I, you know, fill this up with fuel and go through all that to find out this is plugged, I want to blow through there and verify that uh, it's open to begin with. It'll save you a lot of trouble doing it now versus later. But let's look at the whole circuit as, uh, Let's look at this, the fuel accelerator pump circuit as a whole so that we can understand better how that fuel needs to get to that uh, to that hole, okay? So first off, let's just test this. And what you can do here is I can go ahead and just simply take a blow gun and I'm gonna put my finger over the side here and see if you can hear the difference here. So when I, when I blow through that, I'll, I'll try and put it up to the camera so you can hopefully hear hear that difference you can hear that difference when I take my finger off and it's telling me that I got a clear passage I've already done the other side so I know it's worth moving forward now you could take a carb cleaner with your little nozzle spray through there and watch it shoot out the other side that's another option I would only start to do that if I thought something was plugged up and it needed clean but we have good clear passages on the carb body itself Next, let's look at, you know, the, the system as a whole. So we have uh, a diaphragm pump here that when you give it throttle, it's going to push down on this uh, diaphragm plunger. That's going to take the fuel that's just sitting here and waiting. It's going to push it up through that nozzle. And then this is a little one-way check valve. So it holds a little bit of fuel in there so that when you give a handful of throttle the next time, it doesn't have to refill the whole chamber. It has fuel just sitting there and waiting, which gives us better throttle response. Pretty cool. So in this particular one, we got one accelerator pump and we have to have fuel waiting here, waiting at the check valve. And then it also runs across to the other carburetor it has its own check valve, and so these passages need to be clear and free. So what I could do there, same thing, I could just blow uh, blow through here and try to fill some, uh, uh, some air, come out the air side. I could go ahead and just spray some carburetor cleaner in here, for example, then blow it with the blow gun, and then watch it shoot out here. That's another really fast way to do it. Another thing you can do if you're really trying to troubleshoot a problem here is I can go ahead and I can assemble uh, assemble the valve, and then I can literally just manually pump this and, and watch the fuel be able to shoot out both sides. And then I would know that it's good, uh, a good test as well. Uh, why don't I go ahead and do that? So what I'm doing here, might as well show you. Got the spring that seats in there and the other side has to seat here. So what you don't wanna do is get that cock sideways. So you really wanna look at it as you as you put that on there to make sure it seats properly and then uh you may have seen me put that little seal there you may have two of those on your design sometimes there's two passageways there so look out for that all right I don't remember if I showed it before, so I want to show it one more time. That little hole in there is what needs to fill the, the fuel waiting 
for this accelerator pump to go ahead and work, okay? That's on that bottom side. So tiny, look how small that hole is. Tiniest little bit of blockage in there stops the entire circuit from working. So go ahead and uh, close up my drain. This one, just on this side. Because this one, no hole there's only a hole on the back side here and no feed hole to here it's all done through this tube so i don't i don't need to even worry about this right now let's grab some fuel from our test stand okay oh, this spice is so cool to bench test so let's uh let's get a little closer for you All right, so what I gotta do now, it's kind of a nice, nice spot to check for leaks as well. This is uh, perfectly dry. I wanna see fuel shoot out of that check valve. So what I'm gonna do, and, and you can actually see the air burping out of the fill hole right now. And when you first do a carb job, that's what happens is, or you run out of fuel. If you ever ran out of fuel and had to flick the reserve and had some poor performance, it's because this chamber needs to refill itself. There's a lot of air all the way in this system. I'm getting a little fuel, you know, jumping out of here and going into the pan. That's what any fuel that's in here is going to represent. Okay, I'm just starting to see it burp here a little bit. There it goes. So I'm just going to take my time and keep doing that until I start to see some fuel come out the uh, the right side bowl there. So I'm, I'm really just bleeding all the air out, and it, this can take some time. So that means we're getting all the air bubbled out. Look at look how wet it is, right there. So once this is sealed up, okay, and that's flat against the the carburetor itself we have that seal it's going to force it out that nozzle but i want to see it i want to see it shoot out of here a little better and i actually think this is a little a little dirty under that seat so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna kind of force this one to stay plugged all right now that i got that diaphragm uh you know with the air bled and and i can even see a little bit of fuel trickling out the the right side bowl there uh i'm gonna try to even simulate it more with this next uh, little trick or technique the float is going to be sitting 
I mean, kind of hovering right above that. And because that float is in, you know, close proximity, that bowl, it's not letting that fuel just shoot all over like when I do it like this, okay? All right, okay. I'm going to just hover above that hole. Got to figure out how to hold this and not. There we go. Now look at both of those. You can see it shooting out of both sides here. There we go. That's what we want right there. Boom, boom, boom. Brap, brap. That's what we want. All right, my friends, that is how you would test that so that you know you're good to go and not waste time putting it back together. Let me drain these, you know, clean up. It's actually kind of nice. There's a little bit of fuel in there for when I go do the bench test because uh, since, since there's already some fuel in there in the check valve, it should hold it in there so I can do the bench test. So one of the things I'm recommending to the uh, customer on the ticket is to place these bowl gaskets. He said he'd do it himself because he didn't want to wait. But what you want to make sure is that you're proud of the of the surface of the bowl, right? So if I take the screwdriver here and I can see I'm, I am proud, but I'm barely proud. I'd like to, to be able to see where I have a little more light. Now, using a flat edge, like a six inch rule, let me just grab one. Sounds good. Something like this where you can take and really see, see how I can see that light on there. That's a good sign. If you couldn't see any light, if I had this, okay, you could see about the seven mark, there's no light. That would mean that there's, you know, the surf, the gas gets below the surface. But I wanna see like this, where I see a light in between to know they have some compression and that the gasket can do the job that it needs to do. So when I have a gasket out like that, one thing I like to do is just for dang sure, make sure it's not pinched. This is a good chance to take a visual and go, oh crap, something's wrong before you really crank it down and sever the gasket. Um, it happens to all of us. I hate that the screwdriver is magnetized right now. I'm gonna see if something works. You seen one of these little gadgets? I haven't used this thing in forever, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try it. We uh, we know I keep picking up I keep picking up the screwdriver, or I, I keep picking up this screw, and it's just annoying the crap out of me. So let's try. Let's see, minus. Hey, look at that. Look at that. We'll see if it works. Let's try and see it go the other way. Yep. Yeah, look at that. Little son of a gun. So let's do minus again. I have no idea why I'm banging around in this. I've never actually read a manual or seen how to do it, but I'm makes sense to me. So, okay, we're there. I love it. Way cool. Oh, bet you I, I bet you I've had that thing for, gosh, 20 years. You know, one of them things you had to have off the tool truck when you were in college. I'll find a link. I'm sure they still make them. I'll find a link on Amazon and put it below. I'll make a note to the customer. I am just setting this in here so stuff doesn't get lost on shipping. And I want the um, accelerator pump to work nominal. There, now you can see it. Brap, 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 brap. So that we can put fuel to it and really test it for leaks and test uh, the throttle circuit. One thing that's so great about these trays, you can always check yourself. Probably would help to put the drain screw in. Okay, both those are in place. What I'm gonna do 
because I really, really, really want to show you the accelerator pump shooting out there, I'm just going to set it up in here for now and look for my leaks versus putting it back uh, back in the stand. If you didn't see that last video I made, check out that video on that tool right there. And then what we're going to do is I'm just going to operate the throttle until we see fuel, to see that these accelerator pumps work, and then we'll focus on seeing if there's any leaks. And I just threw a piece of cardboard back here so that it doesn't get all over the place. I already saw some fuel coming out of that one. Wrap. Oh, look at that. Nice. Yep. And it's coming out of that one as well. Let me zoom in for you. Okay. Wrap. Wrap. Show you the other one. Okay. Wrap. 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 Cool. So now that I know those are good, then my big focus is just, I like to let the fuel sit on here and then make sure that I'm not getting any dribbles out of the uh, overflows. And in this case, this is where it'd be nice to go back to the test stand and then just let it sit, um, sit for a while. I mean, the motorcycle, let's talk about this while I set this tool up. All right, so the, the motorcycle itself uh, is not designed to have the weight of the fuel in a full tank of gas in the on position sitting on uh, on that float needle. Okay, so that's why they tell you, shut the dang gas off. Let's go ahead and raise my fuel source up a little bit higher, get it well good and above those carbs. And then, uh, like I said, we have uh, the opportunity now to get in here and just let that fuel sit on there. And I'm gonna really focus around the bowl gasket, around the drains, around the accelerator pump, and just make sure that I don't have any fuel leaks. The crossover uh, pipe here that feeds, uh, you know, I was worried in the beginning that there was a crack here if you didn't see that last video, but really it was just a scratch in the plastic here. And then the accelerator pump crossover. I'm looking for any fuel leaks, now's the time to get it. So, but there's always that possibility that something is is not right. So now is the time to get it really good and dry. If I did think I'd have a leak, if you haven't seen my video where you use a, a baby foot's powder or athlete's foot powder to uh, douse the suspected area, clean you know clean the area, douse it with that baby powder, and then turn the fuel on. Or if you're looking for an oil leak or brake leak or anything, you can do it any fluid, uh, and then go back and see if the baby powder changes colors and soaks up uh, something, then you have a problem, but yeah. So I just wanna kinda of clean up my work here and I'm gonna let this sit here. So why is this important? The reason it's important, if I could get them to sit on the weight of, you know, a half gallon of fuel uh, on the bench and not leak, but you go and put them on the motorcycle and it's supposed to have, and you go and you, uh, you put, you know, five gallon tank or four gallon tank and have that full weight sitting on that needle and walk away from it for a month, there's a really good chance it's going to leak. It's not designed for that. So you have to have a good working fuel valve on the motorcycle. I've got a bunch of footage uh, recorded. It's going to be one of my next videos on how to actually uh, inspect the fuel valve and rebuild it on the tank. But you know, a carb job is only as good as the other components working, whether it's a, a fuel pump that's not overpressurizing, a fuel valve that shuts off when it's supposed to, and so on and so on. So all the tests we did in this video are going to verify like, you know, standards in, in any carburetor for being able to test that there's no leaks, that, you know, a needle and seat works. Uh, we tested the CV slides real quick to see if they work. And then we tested that the accelerator pump could work all the way down to the throat the way it's supposed to. So anyway, that's it for this video, my friends. If you haven't done so yet, make sure and like, share, subscribe, join the channel to get all the deeper dive content. Uh, and it's a way to support us for two bucks a month, man. Hook us up. Anyway, make it a great day. And as always, my friends, keep wrenching.